Good afternoon, everyone. Could I ask you all to be upstanding, please, as we welcome the bride? Before we begin our ceremony today, could I ask anyone with mobile phones, please turn them off or please put them on the silent. You are welcome to take photographs, but please, if you don't mind, at this point I'm going to check my own, just to make sure to. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's boys and girls, it's my, my pleasure and my delight as the minister here of Queen Street Church to welcome the families and the friends of Scott and Gemma, to ask God's blessing upon them, to support them with our prayers, and to share in this a day of joy. We meet together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Scott and Gemma. We're here to ask God's blessing upon them. We're here to support them with our prayers and to share with them in their joy. Our opening hymn Today is Love Divine, all love excelling. It's on your orders of service. Love Divine, all love excelling.
Amen. The congregation may be seated. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we are here to celebrate, to rejoice, and to give thanks. We come not just to enjoy a special occasion, but to seek your blessing upon a continuing journey, a lifetime of exploration and discovery in which we pray that your love will grow, flourish, and blossom. We are here to witness an act of commitment, a mutual pledging of vows, a consecration of two lives woven into one relationship. We are here to praise you for the gift of love, to thank you for the joy Scott and Gemma have found in each other, and to commit the future into your hands. Gracious God, draw near to us in this service. Draw near to Scott and Gemma especially. And may your sovereign love enfold us this day and evermore. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So Scott and Gemma, with your family and friends, we thank God for this day, uh, for the gift of marriage. It is the will of God that in marriage, husband and wife uh, should experience a lifelong unity of heart, body and mind. Comfort, companionship, enrichment, encouragement, tenderness and trust. It is the will of God that marriage should be honoured as a way of life in which we may know the security of love and care and grow towards maturity. Through such marriage, children may be nurtured, family life strengthened, and human society enriched. Therefore, no one should enter into this lightly or selfishly, for marriage involves the giving of a man and a woman wholeheartedly to each other. Christ, in a self-giving, comes to our help, for he loves us, uh, and he gave himself for each one of us. So Scott and Gemma, you are now to share in this way of life which God has created and in Christ has blessed. Today we pray, our prayer here today is that the Holy Spirit will guide you and will strengthen you that you may fulfill God's purposes together for the rest of your lives. So Scott and Gemma are now to make the declarations which the law requires. So first of all, I require and charge you both in the presence of God and of this congregation that if either of you knows anything to prevent you from being married, you do now confess it. Phew. (laughs) That's when ministers' hearts go fluttering there, so thank goodness. I'll turn to you first of all, Scott, if you could repeat after me. I do solemnly declare I do solemnly declare that I know not that I know not of any lawful impediment of any lawful impediment why I Charles Scott Gray why I Charles Scott Gray may not be joined in matrimony may not be joined in matrimony to Gemma Elsie Mary Gilkinson to Gemma Elsie Mary Gilkinson we didn't do all the surnames <laughs> or all the middle names in the rehearsal we could be here sometime okay Gemma, turning to you now, you repeat after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not. That I know not of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, Gemma Elsie Mary Gilkinson. Why I, Gemma Elsie Mary Gilkinson. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Charles Scott Gray. To Charles Scott Gray. So you have made the declarations required by law. And I ask you now to affirm in the presence of us all your intention to marry each other. So, Scott, first of all, and the answer is I am. Scott, are you willing to give yourself in marriage to Gemma? I am. And so will you love her, comfort and honour her, be your companion through all the joys and sorrows of life, and be faithful to her so long as you both shall live? With God's help, I will. With God's help, I will. And so, Gemma, the same question to you. Gemma, are you willing to give yourself in marriage to Scott? I am. Will you love him, comfort and honour him, be his companion through all the joys and sorrows of life, and be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? With God's help, I will. 
And I'm going to ask the congregation, if you could stand again for me, we uh, have a promise, each one of us here today, to make to this couple as well. And so a question for you and your response again is similar to theirs, with God's help we will. So I ask you, the family and friends of Scott and Gemma, when you do all in your power to support and encourage them in their marriage, with God's help we will. Who presents Gemma to be married to Scott? I do. Thank you, Andy. I'm going to ask the congregation to be seated. Now, the bridal party, you can have a seat as well there, and Scott and Gemma. Um, My name is uh, the Reverend Andrew Gibson. I am the minister in, in High Street, uh, just down the road here. So today, uh, with my colleague here, the Reverend Andrew Topley, we, we are conducting uh, this, uh, this ceremony there. It's great to be doing it there. At this point in our service, I'm going to invite um, the former lay pastor of our church here, Mr. Jeffrey Robinson, uh, who's going to come and read from God's Word to us. And then after that, Andrew is going to talk to us. So thanks, Jeffrey. Two years ago, Gemma said to me, could you keep the 21st of October free? And those two years have gone very quick. And I just can't believe that it's happening. Uh, it's lovely to be back in Queen Street again to see so many people I know and love and care for. And thank you for the invitation for Arnie, my wife and myself to come here. It's, this is a privilege. 1 Corinthians 13 in the Bible is known as the love chapter. <clears throat> if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. We thank God for his holy word. Amen. Our thanks goes to Jeffrey for coming and bringing that, the word of God from us. A pastor went to the dentist for a new set of teeth. 
The first Sunday after getting his teeth, he only preached for eight minutes. The second Sunday, he only preached for ten minutes. But the following Sunday, he preached non-stop for nearly three hours until the congregation realized that he couldn't stop talking. Finally, somebody got up and made the pastor stop and took him back down to his seat. Concerned for his health, they asked him, Pastor, are you okay? What happened today? The pastor explained, well, the first Sunday with my new teeth, my my gums were so sore, I just couldn't preach any longer than eight minutes. The second Sunday, I felt I could could go a little longer, so I went to ten minutes. He says, but today I mistakenly put my wife's teeth in and discovered I couldn't shut up. (laughs) You'll be glad to know today I've got my own teeth in, and I don't plan to keep you too long. Scott and Gemma, we gather with you today to celebrate your new beginning as husband and wife. We start before God and before your family and friends to witness your commitment to each other. Today, you declare your love for each other before God, all of these people, and you agree to commit all of yourselves to each other for all time. To make this declaration of your love here today is to recognize That is a very serious declaration indeed. You see, Genesis, the first book in the Bible, says, Therefore a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Today you begin a union made by God with vows that you will say before God. 1 Corinthians 13, it's it's a great text to set before yourselves for your new beginning. It sets out clearly what love is and what it is not. It's important to have such a a definition clear in your mind as you begin. This blueprint can be a guide for, let's say, those days in the future when you maybe don't feel so loving. And believe me, those days do come. This is a love that, that goes at life with a real great passion. A passionate love that made God willing to pursue us. Not willing to give up on us no matter how much we disappoint him or try even to ignore him. Such a passionate love is a love given by God that that has the strength and the courage to work through all difficulties. This is not this drippy sort of romance novels, sort of movies type love where people abandon their marriage and each other when things get tough. Such love requires you both to work together. A man must leave his father and mother and now be joined to his wife. It can be hard to work for a groom or a bride to break old ties or habits and to learn to establish a new set of priorities and commitments. And apart from God, everything else now comes second to your marriage. You hear me, Scott? Everything now comes second to your marriage. The Bible tells us that if we have everything but not love, well, then we have nothing. Such a love requires work, especially in those times when you, when you really don't like each other very much. Such love comes only from God. This love is deep and it's lasting. It's one of trust. It's one of commitment. It's a love that requires us to be open, to be vulnerable, to be ready to speak the truth and to walk into unfamiliar territory together. It's a love of confession and forgiveness, one willing to admit that you are wrong. You might have to do that quite a lot, Scott. Most men do, because the woman's always right. You'll get to know that. But you have to accept the admission of the other person with grace. It's a love that will require you both to bite your tongues once in a while, to consider your words and your actions first. It's a love of trust, a love of respect, a love of loyalty. So what is this love that we set before you today? Jeffrey read that love for us. It's patient, it's kind, it's not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. 
endures all things. Hope all things. Love never ends. You may think that that sounds very tough. Actually impossible. And it is if we try to do it on our own. This love you set before yourselves today is a love that can be achieved only as a gift from God. Such a love has its source in God before whom we gather today. A love that will shower down on you as you seek to live in God's love. It's a passionate love. Passion for each other, passion for life, and a passion for God. Scott and Jama, could I invite you both today to allow the love of God to create in your marriage such a passion. A passion that gives you the courage and the strength to create a beautiful, God-filled marriage. A passion that encourages you to bring the best of yourself to this marriage. Creating a marriage giving life to you and to those around you. May your marriage also have within it a passion for God the one who gives you the ability of love and to work at love. Stay close to God because well today. I pray you continue in your marriage with the words of 1 Corinthians 13 set ever before you. May God bless your beginnings today and may God bless your life together. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. I'm going to invite the the bridal party to come back over and join us. And we come now to the vows, so I'm going to ask the congregation to stand as well, please, at this point. So let's let's pray first of all. Gracious God, as you have brought Scott and Gemma together in love and trust, enable them through the power of the Holy Spirit to make and keep their vows through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, if you turn to face each other there, and then you take your right hand and take Gemma's right hand, okay? So Scott, turning to you first, again, repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present Call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Charles Scott Gray. To witness that I, Charles Scott Gray. Take you, Gemma, Elsie, Mary Gilkinson. Take you, Gemma, Elsie, Mary Gilkinson. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. Love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. And this is my solemn vow. And this is my solemn vow. Okay. And then, Jim, if you just take Scott's hand in yours. Okay, same again. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. The witness that I, Gemma, Elsie, Mary Gilkinson. To witness that I, Gemma, Elsie, Mary Gilkinson. <laughs> take you, Charles Scott Gray. Take you, Charles Scott Gray. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. And this is my solemn vow. And this is my solemn vow. Thank you, thank you. So let's pray together. Eternal God, bless these rings, that they may be symbols of love and trust between Scott and Gemma. Amen. So, Scott. Okay, so repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage, 
With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. And all that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. And all that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Okay, if you take your right hands again. There, okay. And then, Scott. You may now kiss your bride. Okay. Folks down the back, you can't see the smiles up here. There, it's, uh, it's lovely. So, Scott and Gemma, um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord and you look, look on you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. The congregation can be seated. Um, the bridal party, apart from Scott and Gemma, you can be seated as well. And Andrew's going to lead us in prayer. Keep the in-laws happy. <laughs> Let us join together as we pray for the the newly married couple. God of grace, source of all love, we pray for Scott and Gemma that they may live together in love and faithfulness to the end of their lives. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Enrich their friendship that each may be for the other, a companion in joy and a comforter in sorrow. Help Scott and Gemma to be patient, gentle, and forgiving, that their marriage may reflect Christ's love for all people, and enable them to make their home a place of welcome and friendship, that their life together may be a source of strength to others. Lord of life, hear us in your love. May we who have witnessed these vows today be signs of your love in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can stand again. If I could, at this point, ask you all to to turn again to your your order of service. We're going to join together at this point. at this point, to sing the hymn, O Perfect Love, All Human Thought Transcending. And we will stand as we sing.
going to have a final blessing and then uh, Scott, uh, Gemma and uh, the bridal, not all the bridal party, uh, are going to go through uh, here to sign the register. While uh, we are doing that, uh, Margaret will, will entertain you, keep you uh, entertained playing the piano there and uh, we will see you all in, in a few moments time. So a final uh, blessing. So let's pray. Scott and Gemma, may the grace of God always surround you. Enrich your life and nurture your love. May it season your words and shape your actions. May God's grace unite you in times of trial, support you in moments of sorrow, and bring you lasting joy and fulfillment. May the Lord be with you, his hands below, his arms around you, and a spirit within you. And may he lead you this and every day as you travel along life's path. In the name of Christ, we ask it. Amen. Okay. If I could ask the, the, the congregation all to be uh, upstanding, please, as we welcome the new Mr. and Mrs. Gray. Thank you. 
Thank you. 